All right. Welcome to Coffee with Marcus and Mark, the number one stock market show on Spotify and one of the most popular market updates on YouTube. In this show, we talk about what's happening in the markets and how we are trading them. Today is Tuesday, April 16th. Can the Dow snap a six-day winning streak? It's uh, on the wire today. Earnings are off to a great start. Uncertainty weighing on the market with tensions in the Middle East. Yields are getting out of control. Gold making a new record. Plus, I'll share two trades that I took with our mastermind group today. As you can see, there's a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and get started. If this is your first time here, my name is Mark Hodge. I'm head coach at Rockwell Trading. I'm normally joined by Marcus Heitkoder, Rockwell Trading's founder, and he's going to be back with me later this week. But let's just dive right in. Look at the charts here. And here we have the S&P 500. Things getting a little rocky for the S&P 500. Uh, I have a 50-day moving average up, and we see here that on Friday, with Friday sell-off, we were kissing that. Uh, moving average. It looked like it could be acting as some support. Yesterday, we opened higher. So we had uh, some selling going into the weekend and it looked like a, a nice start yesterday. Uh, and then a gap fill, but there was some continued selling in the afternoon and broke right through that 50-day moving average. Today at the open, it was a, a lot of uncertainty. What comes ne next? Where do we go? Uh, and should we focus on uh, a retaliation uh, by Israel to the uh, attack by Iran that that really uh, was was kind of an effort that didn't do uh, much, but was uh, still uh, definitely a concern over the weekend. And where do we go here? Or should we focus on inflation? Should we focus on yields? Yields are getting out of control here right now. Traders trying to figure out what is the the most or the biggest priority and what should be driving these markets and it's a little hard to say today the s p started strong and now down 0.3 percent we're pulling away from that 50-day moving average if we look at the dow the dow is green and it will be interesting to see where we go from here we started the day strong helped out by some dow components and strong earnings if we close lower today it will be the seventh consecutive losing streak for the dow Last time, the Dow had seven straight losses in a row, February 2020, during the pandemic. So uh, not a, a great reference there. But is it a bottom? Because with the pandemic, we know that after that uh, losing streak in February and March, we had a real strong comeback. We'll have to see right now Dow positive. The Nasdaq slightly down for the day, trading right around today's open, 15 856 was the open right now we're at 15855 and just kind of stuck right if, if we look at 10-year yields and yields in general uh, there was a spike in yields today we're pulling away from highs here but a huge huge move higher uh, after we had that CPI report and higher than expected inflation where the probabilities of a rate cut, uh, coming mid-year now seem to be all but diminished. And now the probability is focusing on a cut later in the year. That me means that uh, higher rates for longer is the theme. And the 10-year yield up just under a percent. The two-year yield up about half of a percent. It is nice to see that the yields here are now more orderly. In a normal market, you have the lower dated uh, or the shorter dated yields actually lower than the longer dated yields and that's what we're starting to see uh although right now we we still have that inverted yield curve where the two-year yields are higher than the 10-year yield we'll see if that can flatten out and go back to what would typically be uh seen in a normal market but yields continue to make a move higher Let's take a look at the VIX here. The VIX, a.k.a. the fear index, all over the place, uh, higher and then pulling back, but now down about 2% after a huge two-day spike on Friday and then yesterday up 11%. If we look at the VIX here, now for those of you new to the VIX, this tracks 
options premium in the S&P 500 essentially going out 30 days. So when the VIX is higher, it means that options prices are higher, meaning that traders expect more price fluctuation. This could be up or down, but the VIX typically spikes when we have a drop in the market because that's when traders get more feel, fearful and they expect more price fluctuation. If we have just kind of a, a lackluster market where things are just kind of edging higher, that's when the VIX drops. And here you see that the VIX at levels that we haven't seen since October of last year. So a nice increase in general. This is good for option selling and premium selling, which is what we like to do with one of the strategies that we focus on here at Rockwell Trading. Uh, but uh, a big spike over the last couple of days in the VIX. Now, crude oil, also something to keep an eye on. We do see that there's been a big run up here in crude oil, getting up to almost uh, $88 a barrel on Friday with that uncertainty in the Middle East. Now a little bit flat, although up for the day, it looks like we're in a holding pattern, wait and see what comes next. And that goes for crude oil and for the markets, although there's definitely been some downside. Now, let's take a look at some market movers, see what's going on, what's moving the market. And UNH is definitely one to take a look at. UNH reporting better than expected earnings here. They beat on earnings and they also beat on revenue. So that was a huge uh, plus and that is helping out the Dow. UNH up 5.5% right now and a uh, nice little jump there. Let's also take a look at a few other earnings candidates here. Let's look at J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson. The opposite reaction, down 1.6%. Uh, Johnson & Johnson reported better than expected earnings, but did have a revenue miss. So down, coming off of session lows here, down about 1.5%, 1.6%. Uh, but a earnings miss and loss or or uh, mixed results leading to a loss with J and J. Let's look at Morgan Stanley. We still have some banks coming out. JP Morgan kicked things off on Friday with some concerns about uh, what the rest of the year could bring. Morgan Stanley, on the other hand, doing pretty good. A huge beat on earnings, also better than expected revenue, up 3.7% today. So uh, this, uh, you know, both numbers coming in better than expected and investors liking what they had to hear from, from Morgan Stanley. Another big bank reporting, Bank of America, BAC is the ticker symbol. And again, we have mixed results here. So Bank of America, similar to JP Morgan, a little bit of a disappointment for investors down 4.3%, 4.4% right now, although they had an earnings beat and also a revenue uh, beat, but overall they said that their profit and revenue uh, is likely to, to fall here. Uh, so I think that the future guidance was the, the bigger concern here when we, when we look at the actual uh, report for bank of America. So yeah, that's uh, here we go. Last 30 days. Analysts negatively revised earnings estimates. So although they had a beat, uh, not necessarily what investors wanted to hear. So BAC down a little bit. And that means that the S&P down for the day, but the Dow positive helped out by UNH and the NASDAQ is flat. Let's go ahead and go to PowerX Optimizer here. And let's take a look at the heat map here just to see where those gains and losses are distributed. And we see right now that there is a majority uh, that's in the red, which can be explained with the S&P uh, being slightly down. It does look like tech is hanging in there, which we know that the Nasdaq's flat right now. NVIDIA up 1.6%, AMD up 2%, Microsoft up 0.7%. But we do see a little bit of red in banks, and we see some red in oil and gas and real estate. Uh, Apple down 1.9%. We'll take a look at Apple in just a little bit. Uh, Amazon up 0.4%. So just kind of mixed markets with a little red in uh, real estate, energy, and then also 
banks. So before we take a look at our open positions, let's look at the economic calendar here. And today, kind of a, a lackluster day for the economic calendar. However, we do have Fed Chair Jerome Powell speaking. This is 1015 Pacific, 115 Eastern Time. Red flag report because you never know uh, if there's anything that he will say that could spark a move in the markets. And although uh, he's pretty cautious with his words, uh, he's speaking at a round table there. And you never know if there's something that gets brought up or he he lets the cat out of the bag, so to speak, on something that the Fed has discussed that uh, people are not aware of. Generally speaking, uh, it, it's really he's uh, reserved with his comments and he knows what he's saying and he doesn't say crazy stuff. So uh, don't expect a big move there, but you never know. You never know. Uh, Wednesday, not a whole lot going on. Thursday, not a whole lot going on. Friday, not a whole lot going on. So this week, it really is earnings and what's going to happen in the Middle East. If we look at the earnings calendar here, we can see that we still have some bigger names reporting. So uh, just getting started this week. Tomorrow, we have CSX after the bell, Abbott Laboratories, U.S. Bank Corp., The Travelers, uh, a few decent names here. And then on Thursday, Blackstone, Netflix, a biggie. After the bell on Thursday, and Dr. Horton before the bell. Then on Friday, Procter and Gamble, American Express, uh, American Express, Schlumberger. And if we go forward a week, we see that things really start to get busy. So next week, we we really get into earnings. Uh, the week after that, a big week as well. So uh, that's the the heart of earnings season. The next two weeks, although we do have some. Uh, decent names reporting this week. So what does that mean for our trading? And let's go ahead and take a peek at the WTF analyzer. A look at WTF trades. There's been a bunch recently and we did have two stop outs. So I want to bring up, uh, what was it? It was Monster. We had a stop out in Monster. So yesterday with that slide, got out of Monster for loss. And then it was also uh, ADSK, ADSK. So ADSK, although there's a, a new signal for today's open, uh, we did get stopped out in ADSK. We still have a bunch of open positions here. And uh, this would be a combination of some positions that Marcus is in and that I am in as well. Marcus is in ABBV. I could take off ADSK because we no longer have that. CCEP is still open, CSX is still open, CVS is still open, Monster closed, and Ross is still open, and at and is still open. So a little bit of a downside here with some of these signals, and that isn't what we've seen previously this year. Uh, last, you know, first three months of the year, it was picture perfect for the WTF strategy. But we also said that we were outperforming. We, we knew that we weren't going to stay at an 83, 85% winning percentage and uh, have no losses. I, I think we, out of like 40 signals, I think it was one stop out and maybe three or four small losses. Uh, so with that outperformance, we know that there's times when we outperform, sometimes that we um, underperform right now. We see that there, there are some uh, bigger pullbacks taking place on some of these WTF signals. No exits for today. Although we had five new trades, I, I really uh, liked all of these, and I, I did trade one. Uh, but before I share the one that I traded, ADSK, a new signal today, and uh, just kind of. Flirting with its open here, uh, 230.40 was the entry right now, 229.67. AEP was another one. This one pulling back a little bit after the signal. CDW was another signal and also just kind of flirting with the open here. Now, Disney was a trade that I took. So Disney giving us a valid entry signal. And this one actually working out nicely. 
So I got in at 112.82. Right now it's at 114.12. So that one working just like I wanted to. If we look at Ford, Ford also a signal pulling back a little bit. Go figure. I picked the right one this morning. Uh, so I'm happy with that. Uh, I, I like the, the signal with Disney. And here, if you look at some of the, the past performance numbers, they were solid. Uh, so with uh, multiple signals to consider, I, I thought that this one was a good one. And so far, it's working out nicely. Now, moving on to the wheel strategy. And a couple of uh, couple of interesting uh, interesting moves here. Let's look at NEE. NEE. I need to draw a trend line, and I'm gonna make a fake one because this is a trader's tip that not everybody knows about it. <laughs> but when you draw lines on your chart, the market responds. So it looks like we're kind of breaking the, the trend line that I would typically draw. Uh, but I've connected these lows here, and this is as far as I want NEE to go. So NEE, listen to me. You've had such a nice run, and here you have a healthy pullback. Healthy pullbacks are great. It shakes out some weak players and attracts stronger hands. Uh, people looking to buy NEE at a discount. And now we just want this to run on up. So uh, this will be the bottom. I'm predicting it. I don't know if this is the bottom, but I'd love it to be. And now that I've drawn a line, I'm convinced uh, that we will move higher. Let's look at UPS. So UPS coming back down to these lows and I mean, higher oil prices, stuff going on in the Middle East, uh, just, you know, pulling back here. Yeah, yeah, we have earnings coming up. I would have loved to see this get back up to these highs prior to earnings, but hoping that earnings would be a positive catalyst for UPS right now, sit right around those lows that we had uh, towards the end of March when we had that pullback on their, their analyst day. Uh, where there were some misleading numbers that uh, traders uh, didn't take well. Let's look at CSIQ. CSIQ. Where do we go from here, CSIQ? Down 2.5%, although after some bigger losses, we had three bigger uh, down days, and then yesterday, small down day. Today, relatively speaking, small down day. So maybe, maybe we're seeing that this accelerated move lower is, is pausing and potentially coming to an end. I mean, it's just really hard to, to see NEE and CSIQ take off to the upside when you have these big moves in yields, right? NEE, utilities, that's a, um, an, an income play, right? You have it in all sorts of portfolios uh, to produce income typically. And if you could get 4.5, nine five percent on uh the two-year yield it makes that income play a little less attractive and then although not the the same uh rationalization with csiq the uh similar interest rate problem that being rates being higher for longer makes it uh, more expensive to finance something like uh like solar panels so would really love to see yields turn around here. I think it's going to take some uh, another Fed meeting out of the way and also to see some inflation numbers or, that are better or just the Fed saying, hey, we're not concerned about this spike in inflation because we got this, right? That would be a huge uh, positive for CSIQ. You want to know a wheel trade I took? If so, give this video a thumbs up. And drum roll, Apple. Apple having a rough day. Last week, last week, we had our 170 uh, shares at 170 called away. We had some nice premium on the put side when we started the wheel trade there. We got assigned at 170. We had some nice premium on those 170 calls that we sold. And today, today we opened lower. 
And the 170 was giving some great premium. There's still some nice premium at 170, but you're 85 cents in the money on those 170 puts. Might not be a bad thing if you like the idea of getting assigned at 170. Now, I like to I like the way that we have this laid out in PowerX Optimizer better. I, I think it makes it easier to see what's going on and where we have possible support. And oh, look at that, the 165 available right now. I did I decided to sell the 167.50. I got 85 cents, and there's definitely more premium there. But if we look at this chart here, I, I really like what I'm seeing. Uh, we, I mean, Apple's a solid company. And uh, sure, there can be some downside. They do have earnings coming out in three weeks. Uh, for me and my plan, I want to have two expiration cycles if I'm selling puts before uh, the earnings report. So this would be according to plan because we have this Friday, we have next Friday, and then earnings are the following week. But here, uh, the 167.50, I was able to get 45% annualized on the premium that I collected there. There's definitely some more premium available at both levels. It looks like a buck 28 now for the 167.50, maybe 64 cents for the 165. This is where I like the 170, and I've gone back and forth between the 170 and 165. But last week, when we tested the 167.50 again, it had me looking at uh, potentially lowering that that price that I'm selling puts at, just because you know the 167.50 is tested. We could get through 170 like we are right now, and if we get down to 165, I'd love to to get assigned and then sell calls at at 167.50. See that pop back up into this zone, right? 170, 167.50, 165. Pick your poison there, right? Whatever. Whatever you like best, but for me today it was 167.50. Apple right now having a bit of a, a down day, down over 2%. But uh, I like the idea of owning shares at 167.50, or I would not have sold those puts. So, some interesting markets if we go back and see where we are at right now. Again, the markets are just mixed, trying to figure out. Do we pay attention to yields? Are we concerned about inflation? Are we worried about what the Fed has to say? Or are we worried about escalating tensions in the Middle East? Uh, or are we worried about earnings? And so far, earnings less than 10% of the S&P 500 have reported. But of those companies that have reported, they've beaten earnings four out of five times. So not too shabby there. Decent start, but the real heart of earnings season takes place next week and the following. With that said, that's going to do it for today's stock market update. If you like this update, please give the video a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel if you have not already done so. I'm going to be back here tomorrow with more commentary on what's going on in the markets, what we should focus on, and potentially other trades that I'm taking. Until then, happy trading, everybody.